This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Wednesday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect Aotearoa. I'm David Chasson and this is the holiday edition from interest.co.nz. Today we leave with news China is at a pandemic turning point, forced on them by a stuttering economy. It is not necessarily a positive turn. We're ending the year with fallout from growing stresses over China's new pandemic management. China will no longer require visitors to quarantine from January the 8th. They're emerging from three years of self-imposed global isolation under their COVID zero policies, policies that hurt their economy and caused widespread public frustration. With demand at home tanking, Chinese manufacturers are prioritising exports. But with Western supply chains full and a fast-growing reluctance to rely on supply from China, the options for these suppliers are closing on them. Some are getting desperate. And prices for Chinese supply are falling very fast, even on a weekly basis. Competitors in Asia and beyond are facing Chinese suppliers cutting prices hard. And that is making their life a misery. Trading rules about dumping can't respond fast enough. Prices for plastics and steel products are at the forefront of this shift. Places like India, Vietnam, South Korea and Japan are feeling the brunt of the desperation. Chinese steel exports have risen 28% while prices have fallen 40%. The squeeze is intense. The story is similar for many grades of industrial plastics with prices down 25%. Solar panel component prices fell by 10% in just the past two weeks. Also not helping is that the global car industry is cutting its sourcing from China, and rather quickly. The chained visitor policies are unlikely to reverse the trend. This shift is very sudden, and as competitors respond, prices fall and availability rises. This is sure to put a sharp downward pressure on producer prices and renew the possibility of deflation returning. The grim trade pressures are mirrored by grim pandemic measures at home. Beijing City is under threat, and orders have gone out to protect the centre of power. Several provinces have sent medical teams to the capital, despite criticism from local health officials and workers that they too are stretched to their limits. That is sure to continue resentment in a cascading series of what citizens see as missteps. In their economy, China reported that foreign direct investment grew less than 10% from November a year ago, which is a fast-reducing pace. They are calling it stable. And China's industrial profits fell further in official data to November. They had suspended this reporting for the prior three months, and that catch-up is hardly believable. It is likely that the real situation is worse as state-owned enterprises borrowed heavily to meet Beijing's requirements to mitigate the impact of the slowing economy. Meanwhile, Taiwanese industrial production is under pressure from the full court press by the Beijing team and came in down 4.9% from the same month a year ago. Beijing's economic freeze is taking its toll, and now Beijing's natural demand pull is softening fast too. And Taiwanese retail sales are losing out as well, as their citizens grow worried about China's grip. They are now barely above year-ago levels and not even making inflation's expansion now. So it's little surprise that Taiwanese consumer sentiment is very weak. And Japanese inflation rose to 3.8% in November, its highest in more than 40 years. Their price rises are broadening and will pressure the Bank of Japan to ease off its long-running and massive stimulus. In fact, the Japanese government bond yield turned solidly positive at the end of last week in a building trend that markets see a change in policy coming. Then again, events are turning very fast for them. That trade pressure from China may involve yet a new calculus. Meanwhile, Japan is tightening controls on visitors from China. Across the Pacific, the giant American economy is ending with mixed economic signals. But consistent with the easing inflation pressure, the U.S. Fed is trying to manage consistent with a 2023 soft landing. Certainly, the American economy is in far better shape than most analysts and pundits had assumed, both at the start of 2022 and even just three months ago. The resilience is impressive, but will it last? U.S. durable goods order, however, came in much lower than expected. They were down 2.1% in November from October and their worst month-on-month result since the 2020 pandemic shock. However, they are ending the year 6.3% above year-ago levels and keeping up with inflation. 
Capital goods orders were up 4.6% on the same basis and not quite keeping up. Retail inventories were unchanged in November from October, but wholesale inventories picked up sharply, up a full 1% from the prior month. Partly that is because consumers are buying less electronics. And it was also despite an unusual fall in imports, delivering a sharply reduced trade deficit in November. American exports did grow, however. Meanwhile, inflation's impulse seems to be moderating there. Their widely watched PCE price index was up 5.5% in November, a notable reduction from the 6.1% rate in October. Better still, the month-on-month rise was at an annualised 1.5% rate, the least in four months and well below the annualised 5% rate in October from September. In November, incomes are still rising at a 5% annualised rate, so faster than expenditures. Overall, these trends are positive. Also positive was the rise in new home sales in November, up 5.8% from October, when a fall was expected. But that can't hide the fact that they're running substantially slower than a year ago levels, about 15%. Still, there was an unusual boom over the pandemic, so they're really just back to pre-pandemic levels again. And the final University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey not only confirmed the rising mood, but came in above their flash result. Although it's not back to year ago levels yet, it seems to be on its way. Helping our American petrol prices, which can continue to edge down. And at this time of year, heating oil prices are important for many families, and they too are well off their June highs and back to February 2022 levels. Administration management of these pressures seems impressive in hindsight. And the massive spending bill just approved by Congress, 8% of GDP, will flow through their economy in 2023, and, will be, and much of it will be local industrial production. Not insignificantly, because to get Republican support, an outsized part of it was for the Pentagon. There will be international flow-throughs, however, not the least being enhanced in support for Ukraine's defence. In Germany, the mood is brightening, as we have reported earlier in the week, but partly because the weather is cooperating. But there remain questions about whether this will translate into higher personal spending in the face of threats on their borders. The German savings instinct may crimp their economy. We should also note that insurers are now pulling back from covering ships that trade with Russia, and this is likely to royal oil and gas markets. The war on Ukraine is about to heat up. The winter has been milder there than usual, meaning the mud has stayed longer than expected. When it freezes, allowing heavy military vehicles to move, both sides are gearing up for new attacks and counterattacks. Things will be tense until the spring thaw as Russia throws men into the southern and eastern meat grinder battles. The inability of the Russians to change tactics as they suffer enormous losses is striking. And the US Treasury 10-year yield starts today at 3.85% and up another 10 basis points from Christmas Eve. And the price of gold will open today at $1,814 an ounce, and that's up $16. And oil prices start today up a dollar from pre-Christmas levels to just under $81 a barrel in the US, while the international Brent price is just under $86 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar will open today at 62.4 US cents and down a quarter cent from this time yesterday. Against the Australian dollar, we're a little softer too at 93.1 Australian cents. Against the euro, we're just under 59 euro cents. That all means our trade weight and index start today at 71 and down 20 basis points. And the Bitcoin price is now at $16,653 and down 1.5% from this time yesterday. Volatility over the past 24 hours has again been modest at just under plus or minus 1.5%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes. Get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chasson, and we'll do this again tomorrow. Mm-hmm.